Uh, Giovanni, how are you? A uh, couple of things. Uh, first, $56 a barrel after hurricane season, after massive uh, OPEC agreement, 100% compliant. $56 a barrel with regional tensions, with North Korea, everything going the way it's going. Uh, success? Do you call this a success? Considering that a few months ago, uh, no one really expected we, we could approach a $60 barrel and everyone was talking that oil prices could go at 40 or even lower. Uh, yes, that's probably a success. Also, uh, we need to consider what would have happened to the oil price if OPEC wouldn't have come up with the deal last year. We would be much lower nowadays. Sorry, but it's not. It's not 60. It's 56. It's a big difference. Uh, it's a huge difference, actually. And I think that the, the, the complacency that tends to happen in these events is that what has not happened will happen without the geopolitical uh, risks. That, uh, uh, so from here to the end of the year, what, what, is likely, what is likely to happen? We don't have the, uh, you know, the, these disruptions. We don't have that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of agreement. More importantly, they're talking about 100% compliance and Russia's at 9.9 .9 million barrels a day. And, and uh, Iran is targeting 4.4 .4 million barrels a day and they're calling for the US to curb production when the US it does not decide it's not a government decision so um, what is going to make uh, oversupply which still is there change in the next month I see the oil price in the fourth quarter. When I talk about oil price, I mean Brent in a range between 55 and 60 dollar barrel. And I believe the main driver for this uh, uh, price environment uh, where we trade now and we should trade over the coming three months is that uh, demand growth will be stronger than supply growth. And we need to remember where OPEC supply was one year ago. Uh, if Saudi Arabia is implementing what it has indicated the other day that it plans to cut their exports to 7.2 million barrels per day. That's 1 million barrels per day lower than one year ago. And production could be also 1 million barrels per day lower than one year. So the supply growth will be relatively muted in the fourth quarter. And that's the reason why I think the oil price remains supported in the fourth quarter. Just come in very quickly on this whole story. I think you're, you seem slightly sceptical that the efforts have achieved their goal. And yet Giovanni was saying that we've gone from 11% over inventories, five-year levels, to only 5%. Well, inventories are still at Big. the high levels yes. of, the, of the average. <clears throat> of the of five years, uh, but more importantly, I think that uh, the the bulls of the oil market are missing the elephant in the room, which is efficiency and technology, and it then it takes away every year, no matter what they say, it takes away estimates of uh, growth of demand by the region of around 500,000 to 600,000 barrels a day of expectations uh, of the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So I think that the problem that we're finding here is, look, uh, it's, a, it's okay. The OPEC has achieved to put a floor on oil prices. That's what they've done. But uh, the, the big problem that continues to happen is that the level of investment that had been taken in the last uh, decade uh, created an overcapacity that is it's simply impossible to offset with a Chinese economy that is moving to a different stage, which is moving to a different stage that is less about a massive use of commodities and more into the services businesses. Mm. So you're saying the balls are missing the elephant in the room, but not the cat amongst the pigeons, and they're all being <laughs> lemming-like and going over the cliff. Pretty much so. Okay, but let's get some more animals into this as well. Right.